Again, I would like to reiterate that for Biden Fruit, the temptation of Edward Cullen was in no way created by me. This travesty is not my responsibility. And so begins for, Bi for Biden Fruit, the temptation of Edward Cullen, Chapter 2, Edward. A.N. Vincent, or whatever your name is, thanks for the lame review. You total D star star star, no one is making you read this fic. If you don't like it, then leave. Clustal Zodiac and Brittany J, thanks for the advice on my character, but she's not a Mary Sue, she's not perfect, look, she has anger problems, and she looks the way she does for a reason. I will explain it as the story goes on. Chapter 2, Edward. The anger faded from my sapphire eyes. Whatever, I said sweatily. I didn't mean to yell and be ride. Thou art too beautiful for that, he said, and for once I didn't feel like cock-dropping the guy for paying me a comp compilement. Instead, I just smiled. I'm Eudard Cullen, he murmured. Who are thee? Altat Tiana Loren, but you can call me Tiana, or maybe Tia? I said, feeling shy at the way he was looking at me. I had seen that look in so many male eyes, but never quite as intense or sexy. His eyes burned like hot gold velvet in the midday sun, like phoenix feathers and rainbows, so gold and magical. That reminds me of bygone times, he said, carefully retching out a shaking hand and brushing my cheek. Thy face is like an old painting. Thou is exceptional. You're not so shanky yourself, but I couldn't help noticing. You have a freaking GF, you ass. I saw you with her in the cafeteria. I notched his hand hard with my long, black nails. Thee did notice me then, he purred with a sly grin. I was up against the wall with his face right close to me now. He wanted to sex me. I could tell, and suddenly he was kissing me. I felt my slim legs would break in half, and my heart expanded like a big balloon. I felt his hand sliding softly down my neck, and underneath hit my top. He stoked my breath for a few minutes, and his man carried standing in action and hard as a rock against my legs. And then he ripped my top and pulled it of me and doped it on the floor. We made out for ten minutes, and then he tried to take of my bra, but I pushed him away suddenly, thinking, WTF, Tia! You are just going to let this total stranger take your clothes off in school where anyone could see you? I'd never let a guy kiss me before or touch me, and suddenly I was letting this Cheeto sicko with a frickin' GF grope me just because he was uber hot with sex or hair and cold as death. I was acting like a biatch and a slut, and I was suddenly very ashamed of my actions. Bastard! Never touch me again! I gasped. If thou thinks thou can keep thou hands of me, he answered all smugs, all smug, and I couldn't believe how he made me feel so angry and so arused at the same time. At that moment, I had never hated any boy more in my whole life, and the worst part of it was he was so freaking hot! I was totally creaming my panties, and he knew it. This was horrible. I felt disguised with myself and turned to leave. Wait! I need to speak to thee! I know your secret, Tia! He said in a quiet voice, gassing in my eyes. You're one of my kind. Who made thee? Are you part of a coven, or on thou own? What is said sharply? Dude, you're insane, and you freaking smell. He didn't really smell, but I didn't know what else to say. <laughs> thy a campire, Tia, a vampire. But why can't I read thou mind? I thought Bella was the only one, but here thou art. What does this all mean? He punched the wall with his buckly fist and shouted suddenly furious and his eyes flickered red. I schlepped him hard again across the face and tried to leave, but he caught my waist and I struggled and tried to hit him again. He ta caught my hand in midair and hammed me against the wall where his hand had already made a huge dint in the wall. His face was blunt and right heavy in mine. My knee came up hard against his massive, throbbing giggle stick between his legs, and he drubbed over in pan. I broke free and coated my books. <laughs>
and started rugging away to math, but Edward hand finished with me. Tia! No! He screamed after me, tearing his shrit of himself in fury and throwing it over my eyes. I lost my sight and was behind me, breathing into my ears. I'm sorry, Tia! He whimpered sadly, picking me up off, off the floor and gazing mutely into my eyes. I didn't mean to rut thee. I'm so contemptuous. I apologize. This is just so weird. You're so freaking weird, you mean. I snapped whitely as he lay on the floor so hot and crying with his shirt off his with his pippling body. I wanted to forgive him for calling me a vampire. Vampire? I'd heard that one before from preppy losers, asking if I sleep in a coffin and suck blood like Lestat just because I like eyeliner and listen to Linkin Park. And making fun of me and trying to force me against the wall and maybe plunder my crevices, but I didn't. I left him crying on the floor and went to find my class. As I entered math class, I suddenly droped my box again, as a flashing pain burned in my left hand as my birthmark glinted gold for a second. No joke! And I fell over. <laughs> the pain was suddenly gone, and some weirdo blonde freak called Eric was helping me up and staring at me like a perva rapist. I kicked him in the shoulder. Kung Fu, baby! As he gazed longingly after me, in his frickin' dreams. I sat down at the back of the class, unable to think about anything but my weird encounter with Edward Cullen, wondering what it all could mean. A.N., what do you pl think, please? R&R! &R. Big shout-out to my friend Abigail. Good luck for tomorrow. Did you see I put the man care thing in? LMAO. Also, love to Tiffy and Rach and Zachy Baby, of course. Love you guys so much. XX, Becky Mac, X. X. And thus ends chapter two of Forbidden Fruit, The Temptation of Edward Cullen. I hate you.